Hey, in this video we are going to discover how to subdivide a plane into equivalent squares that can be selected with the cursor. We'll also see how to add objects right on top of the middle of each square, how to prevent creating more than one object on top of a square, and a bit of animation. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we jump into the code editor, let's understand the idea behind the lines of code that we are going to type. The idea is simple. First, we need to detect the position of the intersection of the cursor with the plane, and that's so simple using the Raycaster class. Next, we are going to call the floor method on the position vector in order to get the largest integer less than or equal to each one of the vector components. So for example, if the cursor is at the position 1.5 on the x-axis and 2.3 on the z-axis, floor will return 1 and 2. If the cursor is at 3.9 and negative 1.3, floor will return 3 in negative 2, you get the idea. Next, we are simply going to create a 1x1 one one plane that serves as an indicator of the square the cursor is on top of, and position it using the values returned by the floor method. One thing to keep in mind is that when we add or position an object in the scene, 3GS puts the center of it at the indicated coordinates, and that in this case shifts the square by half of its size. To solve that, we are simply going to add half of its width and height to the values returned by the floor, and that's pretty much the main idea. As you can see, we currently have an empty scene created using this very basic template, so nothing special here. That being said, the first step we are going to do is to create a mere 20x20 20 20 plane. Next, we are going to add the grid, and to do that, we'll create a grid helper with the same width and height as the plane, and place it on top of it. And now, we can make the plane invisible by setting the visible property within its material to false. Again, that will make it invisible, but still present in the scene. The next thing we are going to do is to create the highlight square. Three GS puts the center of objects at the center of the seam by default, which is not exactly what we want here. To fix that, we'll just reposition the highlighting square to make it fit within one of the grid squares. And now that we are done with the grid, we are going to create the variables needed for the Raycaster. By the way, if you don't know what is a Raycaster or how it works, make sure to check out my 3GS guide which includes a section dedicated to this subject. I'll leave you the link in the description below. The list of intersected objects will have the grid and the objects added on click, however we are only interested in the intersection of the plane with the ray. So what we are going to do is to add a name to the plane, and then add an if statement to run the code we are going to type only when the intersected object is the one that has ground as name. The next step is the creation of a variable that contains the calculated position where the highlight mesh must be set at. Highlight pose is a vector3 instance which value is going to be copied from intersect point, which is also a vector3 that contains the coordinates of the intersection point between the mouse and the plane. Floor will be applied on the X, Y, and Z components of the copied vector, and finally we are calling add scalar to add 0.5 to the components of the vector returned by the floor method. The last step is to reposition the highlight mesh using the values calculated from the previous line, and that's it.
Now that we got the highlighting square working, let's use it to place objects on top of the plane with mouse clicks. First, let's create a mesh that we are going to make a copy from whenever a mouse click event is detected. Next, of course, we need to add the event listener and within its callback function we'll loop through the intersections array to make sure that the user is clicking on the plane before placing an object. If the plane exists in the intersects array, then a copy is going to be created by calling the clone method on the sphere mesh object. And then we'll call copy to set the position of the sphere mesh clone in the scene. As you can see, now we are creating meshes on mouse click, yet there is a problem which is the creation of objects on top of each other. Let's log the number of objects the scene has to see if the problem persists when we make the solution. So currently it doesn't matter where we click on the plane whether it has an object on top of the selected square or not, the length of the children array is increasing which means objects are added to the scene. To solve that we are simply going to create an array containing the objects added then, when a mouse click occurs, a search must be effected on each array element to see if the position of the highlight mesh is the same as one of the array elements. Eventually, the object creation will depend on the result of this search. So first, we are going to create an empty array, then we'll push an element into it after it gets added to the scene. Now we'll call find to do the search within the array, the result will be true if an element has the same x and z values as the x and z values of the highlighted square. Next we'll use a simple if statement based on the value returned, if the object exists a clone will be created and added to the scene, else nothing happens. In this section we are going to add some animation to the highlight square and the objects. Let's start by changing the color of the highlight mesh and make it red whenever it points to a square that has already an object on top of it and that to indicate that we can't add another object at that same position. So first we'll copy this block of code which will tell us if the hovered square contains an object or not and then the color will be dependent on the result. Now, even if this works, there is a little problem which is when the click event occurs, the color stays white until a mouse movement event is detected. To solve that problem, we'll make it so the color changement happens instantly when the mouse button is clicked. That done, now let's make the highlight square blink, to do that we are going to use a bit of math to set the value of its opacity. We'll change the opacity over time, so we'll add the time parameter here in the animate function. Now if we test this out, you see that nothing has changed and that's because we didn't activate transparency within the mesh's material, so let's do that. Next let's add some rotation to the existing objects on the x and z axis, to do that we are going to loop over the objects array and add the rotation to each element.
And finally, let's add a bit of bounciness to the meshes alongside the rotation. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.